This is a prototype stove for emergencies like what just hit the Philippines. Larry Winiarski's come up with this design. Um, a stove that can be used out of local materials, stuff readily available to boil water quickly with little amounts of wood. Uh, it's something that has big possibilities. It can be used with any size pot. I was showing you the idea on how to do it. Hi, uh, we're here today to try to uh, make a video of how to improvise a rocket institutional cooking stove uh, uh, with uh, materials that people might find locally, for instance, uh, uh, regular building bricks. And uh, the size of the brick that we want to use is really not that, that critical. The important thing is to uh, get uh, a, a stacking arrangement so that it approximates the the correct dimensions that we need. And I, in an ideal world, we would use uh, bricks that were lighter weight and more insulating. But uh, we don't have time to make those bricks. Uh, we want to use uh, what's available. And uh, it turns out that uh, 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 I was able to get uh, yesterday, a bunch of uh, bricks that uh, you know are formed with these holes in them. These, this isn't critical. Uh, a, a solid brick would work, but there's an advantage to using these bricks if you have them, because you can fill the the holes with ash and and get a little bit more insulation. The idea here is that we have. Uh, done some experimenting with this particular size brick, uh, how we can stack it up uh, to get the right uh, tunnel for the fuel and uh, a good height for the combustion chamber. And uh, what we want to do is put a cylinder of metal around you know, these bricks and we'll fill the space between the bricks and the cylinder of metal which in our case today will be just corrugated metal uh, wired together. And so we'll fill that space with ashes to uh, try to get a little more insulation. Uh, now, uh, ideally these bricks should be insulating, but they won't have them right away, and, and we need these stoves you know, as soon as possible. So when you're using uh, a stove you know, all day long, uh, the, uh, the heavy brick is not as bad as you would first think because once it gets up to an equilibrium temperature, uh, the brick is, has been absorbing as much heat as it can, and then it's not going to really absorb any more. It will just be uh, 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 a kind of a insulator, and with the ashes around it, it'll be even more insulating, and uh, uh, it should make a fairly... A, uh, efficient stove, and uh, we're, we're looking for a target that uh, if you have the materials handy, uh, like the brick and the sheet metal and your pot, you should be able to assemble this in a couple of hours. And we're hoping that uh, th these videos will uh, help people to get the idea and, uh, and see what we're striving for uh, on laying up the brick uh, to get the right spaces, and uh, we may actually do this with several different size bricks just to get the idea across that you know, you're not stuck with one particular size brick. Uh, you can use uh, different sizes if you're willing to improvise, uh, but keeping the, the basic to critical dimensions roughly the, the same. Uh, so. Uh, we've done this on this table just because it was easy to experiment with the layup of the bricks. Uh, uh, actually, this will be on the ground or on a concrete floor, and it will be actually sitting on uh, uh, a layer of brick to protect the concrete floor. Uh, we've d dismantled down here uh, to essentially, you know, the base, and the base has uh, got a little bit of a of a, a shelf here, and the reason that we have the bricks uh, uh, spaced a little bit uh, uh, 
uh, not exactly on top of each other. So you want this little uh, ledge here. And the uh, uh, distance between here and here, uh, somewhere around six inches. And then leave a little half, about a half inch uh, shelf here. And the shelf will have little bits of rebar that will bridge across here. And that'll be holding up the ends of the wood. The wood burns here, turns to charcoal. The charcoal is, remains on these little like rebar grates un, until it's pretty much consumed and then the ash falls down. So then we have a, uh, a little sheet of metal or it could be uh, pieces of clay tile that the wood is actually going to lay on here. W once you get the idea of the approximate size that you're striving for, you adapt whatever bricks you have to some kind of stacking configuration that will give you this uh, hole, which is like approximately six to seven inches square, and a feed tunnel where the wood goes in that's also about you know six to seven inches uh, square. There'll be a spot later on in the video showing the stove being built slowly. Here it's just quickly showing how it's assembled. What's critical is to place the bricks so that the, the joints are covered would give it more structural integrity. Okay, uh, here uh, right now we're going to make the metal cylinder to hold the ash that surrounds the bricks. To make the cylinder, the corrugated metal will need to be cut into sections and spliced together because the sheets of metal are too narrow to make a cylinder of sufficient diameter to surround the bricks and pot. The corrugated metal cannot be bent lengthwise into a proper cylinder. It has to be cut into sections and spliced together. The length of the cut sections will be determined by how high the bricks and pot will sit. For this stove, we needed 32 inches. This particular sheet of metal is 8 feet long, or 96 inches, so we're using tin snips to cut it into thirds, 32 inches each. To determine how many sheets of tin you're going to need to surround your stove. And so, if you don't have, <clears throat> you could figure it out mathematically with circumference and diameter and pi r squared and all that, but if you don't have the ability to do that, you can take a piece of rope, you get your stove built. This isn't the same one that we did, but this is just showing you what you could do. You just take a piece of rope and have your stove and wrap the rope around it. So that's, this is going to tell you how much tin you need around the stove, so it's going to need to be a little more than that. So now we've got this amount of rope, and then we'll measure it against the length of the of the pieces of tin, not the length, but the width of them, so that we then you can figure out how many sheets of tin or how much how how tight the splices are. So we'll go do it on a piece of tin and show you. We had the rope measured, and so that's one sheet of tin, two sheets of tin. So it, it'd be just over three sheets of tin for that particular stove, which would mean you'd need to have a fourth piece of tin, and then they could be pretty, you could overlap them several valleys. If it was just under, then by just overlapping the valley at a time and piercing your nails, you'd have the right diameter stove. So the, the stove that, that we did took three pieces of tin. And I can see that this one has one, two, two and a half valleys. Yeah, these are two and a half valleys and then just two valleys on this here. So a bigger, a, if you had a bigger pot that you were using, you'd need to use another sheet of tin. It's, you just figure that out before you put the tin together. Uh, now we've cut the uh, 8 foot or 96 inch long uh, 
corrugated roofing into three sections. And now we're going to sew these sections together with uh, little bits of tie wire. Uh, first of all, we have to punch the holes for the tie wire. One could also use pop rivets, but uh, wire is very useful and is more generally available. So, okay, uh, what we're doing now is punching the holes to sew the corrugations together with wire. And uh, uh, we've overlapped uh, the corrugations about this much. It's kind of like we have two valleys here that are uh, overlapped. And we've punched, you know, a, a couple of, of holes. I already punched them. They have to hit it pretty hard. So, yeah, if you'll hand me that. Okay, uh, we've actually punched these ales through this, so that they actually uh, went into the, the board underneath. And so now uh, we're going to get a, a piece of wire through here. And this is kind of like, uh, you know, people were basting a quilt, uh, you know, using yarn to, to tie. Well, in this case, uh, our, our, our ties are going to be this uh, uh, wire. So we got the wire coming through. Okay, put my finger underneath and kind of, kind of taking up the slack of the, the wire. Bending it over. Now uh, I'm going to get the pliers. Twist these wires together, and we have to be kind of careful not to, not to twist them too much because we can break them off. The wires are kind of fine here. We could twist them up later, but that's good enough for right now. All right, so uh, probably what we want to do is uh, put at least uh, one more uh, tie in the center, and probably for security, maybe we ought to have two more ties in the center, maybe one about here and one about here. We have now laid the bricks down on the cement so that we can protect the cement floor from fire. And we're filling the holes in with wood ash and packing it in and that will insulate it from the fire. If, if you wanted to make the stove a little bit higher, you could put several layers of bricks. That would make it so the cook didn't have to bend down so far feeding wood and checking the fire. If the bricks don't have holes in them, you wouldn't have to worry about the ash at this point. is we've notched out a, a little part of the brick so, so that the end of the rebar can rest on that. And then we're going to put that uh, brick in here and the rebar goes like this. I only have three rebar, four would be better, but three will work. And I'm going to use a little bit of clay for the spacing. So, uh, a rebar grate uh, is probably good, you know, for about six months before it burns out. And then the rebar will actually, you know, have to be replaced. Uh, but for an emergency situation, now like after the hurricane, uh, th this would work quite well. So, what we have now is we have uh, rebar um, mudded in with a, a clay for spacers. The clay is not really a glue, it's just to, uh, uh, to harden, to make a, a space, to keep the rebar separated. The problem with using the clay is that with the fire it's going to get too hot and burn, shrink and break out. So if it's possible at all to notch the brick so the rebar fits in its own little notch, that would be best. What we're going to try to do is make a combustion chamber that uh, will have an opening of uh, uh, up here uh, 
roughly uh, about uh, you know six to seven inches. Okay. Uh, this is where a shelf goes, you know, to hold the sticks of wood. And uh, uh, I'm going to uh, overlap the shelf just a little bit, you know, to hold it in, in, in place. Uh, you may have to replace this shelf, but I think you can probably work it out and, and slip another one in, uh, you know, from time to time. So... Now uh, we'll get another. Okay. Um, what we're doing here is uh, trying to get a little more insulation. Is uh, the bricks have holes, and we're putting ash in the holes. Move your hands on that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're adding another course of bricks, but uh, the bricks that uh, are going across here to make this uh, uh, bridge, when we put ashes in, the, they would just fall through. So what we're doing is putting this little piece of metal here, and the, the heat and stuff won't be so real near the, the, the metal. And uh, then we'll put this other brick on top of that, and now we can go ahead and start uh, uh, filling these with ash. Looking for a... Okay, so right now we've... Uh, brought the chimney up uh, 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 to meet uh, the height of this uh, pot uh, and we could have actually had a little shorter chimney if we had deeper pots but you know the pot will be something like this we'll have you know pot supports there and uh, right now uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, determine uh, uh, where to cut this uh, uh, tin so that we can wrap the tin, tin around in front and and have a good overlap and so uh, it looks now like uh, probably uh, we're going to have to cut the tin maybe oh uh, at least a couple more inches more so that's what we'll do Okay, so uh, what we've done now is uh, 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 put this uh, uh, corrugated uh, metal around here. Uh, by trial and error, we've determined that about where to cut it, and uh, we want a good overlap on the on uh, uh, the the, uh, the waves, and so uh, it looks like that's going to be the the right place to stitch this together to make a cylinder out of it. And uh, what Larry's doing is showing is that uh, we have uh, the pot will fit down in here, but there's enough space uh, to actually put an internal uh, a skirt around the pot, spaced off the pot about one centimeter, and then the space between the skirt and, and the uh, corrugations will be filled with ashes. There you go. That's uh, uh, how we'll get a high efficiency on the heat transfer. So, okay, so the next thing now is, 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 is to go uh, punch some holes and wire this thing together. Good enough. Okay, uh, so what we've done here is we've split or cut the, the metal back to the uh, close to the appropriate place and uh, uh, we've folded these in overlapped them and wired them together and so now but we do have a little gap here 
that the ash can run out. So I'm taking some clay and I'm going to pack clay in, uh, from the inside, you know, so that we can kind of seal up these uh, uh, little spaces because uh, the inside will seal, the outside will just flake off. Just as a tamper. Now we're going to fill uh, ashes uh, in the space between the brick and the, the corrugations. But I don't want to fill up the, uh, the chimney of our rocket stove. So I'm putting something in there uh, so that the uh, uh, ashes don't uh, fall down into the, you know. The... Now we have our bag of ash and uh, try not to breathe all this ash. The combustion chamber is sticking up, so what you don't see is there's a space between the outside of the stove and the the tin, and so that ash is being used to fill in those spaces, the holes in the bricks and then between the sides of the bricks and the tin. So another bag of ash coming up of the brick. No, actually we'll taper it up so it does on the inside edge next to the uh, corrugations, it'll be a little bit higher than the, the brick. So it works better to have a, a that rather than the top be straight across to ash, we'd like to have it be, be tapered up toward the sides. How much? Like an inch? Uh, no, it'd be about three quarters of an inch, not very much. There's basically the rocket stove chimney. The bricks are insul insulated with uh, ash. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, put on uh, some pot supports and a skirt. Well, we can probably put the skirt on first. The skirt's going to go in here like, like this and be adjusted to the size, it doesn't quite fit perfectly, so what we're going to do is probably have to add a piece of sheet metal here to, you know, but in the meantime we can put some wires across here, you know, for, for the adjustment. The inner pot skirt's made from a 15 gallon drum that was cut with a hacksaw, cut between the ribs and uh, it'll make a nice pot skirt. We have the ashes uh, put in around the bricks and We've kind of adjusted the corrugations to be more or less circular. And so now we're going to put in an insulated skirt. And uh, these dimensions of the corrugations and the skirt and the height need to be uh, adjusted for the size of the pot. Have some, uh, like a piece of, uh, of, of a barrel or a bucket that was almost the right size, it wasn't quite, so uh, we just made a little uh, extender for this uh, so we can make it a little slightly bigger in, in, in diameter. And so this, the idea is we would have pot supports uh, uh, kind of have to be uh, adjusted for the uh, size of, of the pot. Ideally, the, the pot support gap right here should only be like about an inch and a half or so, an inch to an inch and a half. Uh, and then the gap around the pot about uh, one centimeter, uh, like about three eighths of an inch. Uh, and then this space uh, can be uh, filled with ashes and so we have a really good insulating skirt. It'll work even without the insulation if you have you know, a, a good adjusted skirt, but if we can put in uh, ash in here, it'll work that much better.
okay so here we have uh, uh, the stove pretty much completed with the insulating skirt and uh, now uh, we need pot supports and what I have here is probably not the you know the right size for the pots that I have but you'll have to cut pot supports uh, that will give you you know the right standoff you know so that the, the, the flames can can come up here or the hot gases can come up here bend and go and go up around the sides of the pot uh, unfortunately the pot that I have uh, is really not as deep as I would like uh, but uh, to use this pot we'd have to probably have taller pot supports the, this pot uh, uh, has a handle that uh, kind of gets in the way there's only one one handle uh, this could actually uh, uh, work like that but it would be better if the pot were actually deeper and then you'd have the pot support uh, where it, it's better if the, the pot actually rests on a, on a pot support but basically there you have it Larry and Larry Jr. worked late into the night getting the stove to the point where it was ready then the next afternoon uh, I made some adjustments and got fire in the stove and we'll talk about that. The handle hit here so you couldn't drop it all the way down so what I did was took more brick. I broke some bricks uh, so I could fit them in place there to raise the make the combustion chamber be a little higher and that got it up so that the now this is up high enough so the combustion chamber is really taller than you want it to be but anyway we did it and otherwise we would have had to cut all this tin down so yeah so i broke those bricks and uh, just so they could fit because they wouldn't fit full length, and one of them's full length, and then the others I had to break, and I backfilled again with ashes. Um, so you, you can see the flames aren't coming all the way up. So that that combustion chamber could be a couple bricks lower, and and uh, you'd heat the water up faster. It would have been a good idea before this tin was put in place. If you'd taken some little bolts, drilled holes, four holes in here, and put some bolts that would create a gap to, that would stick out and then eat, make the, distant, the, the distance between the tin and the pot equidistant all the time, that would, that would keep the gap perfect. Uh, so that's, that's another little thing to add to it. If you had the... I mean, even if you didn't have a drill, you could just take a nail and a hammer and poke through. And then even if you didn't have bolts, you could bend some wire um, through those holes just to make something so you have a spacer to, to, so that the pot stays centered. It was right about 15 inches, of, if I remember right, before I added the extra brick in there. And so typically, what would the length of the combustion chamber be? Uh, you'd want it at least 12 inches. So again, if I have the bolts here, it would just automatically center this thing. So especially if you're cooking in the dark without good light, it's going to be hard to see the gaps. You can take a piece of wood or a little piece of metal to use for pushing the wood forward. Again, if you feel the back, you need to pull up, pull the. If you feel you, the wood touch the back, then you need to pull it back. And with this stuff, with the high combustion chamber, when, if you hear the roaring stop, that means either the wood needs to be pushed a little farther forward. Or it could mean the ashes, at some point the ashes are going to clog up underneath you. And so when that happens, you can take a machete and put back in there. If you've got some container to 
to empty them out into and be good because they'll be hot. But cleaning those ashes out from underneath is going to keep the air flowing underneath the rebar. There is a, if you have real long pieces of wood, you could put a brick here and then the wood could go over the top of the brick, but you don't want the brick pushed all the way forward. And make sure you've got a gap for the air to flow between the brick and, and underneath the piece of tin. Uh, if the wood's not that long, the brick's not really that necessary. And again, if, if you had this a, a foundation that was a little thicker than this, you wouldn't have to be bent down on your knees to, to pull out the ashes and to feed the wood. It'd be at a more comfortable height. Okay, so to me, this hole looks a little tight for wood people might have, but then I'm thinking for emergency situations, if, if there's resources being brought in, a lot of it's being brought in on pallets. So this would work actually pretty darn good for splitting pallets into small pieces. Um, one thing I'm seeing is this brick here wants to pull loose. The loose brick could be remedied. The, those, there's several bricks lined up, so just by wiring a couple wires through those holes, the bricks wired together would keep that from falling out. This, once this thing got going, it stopped smoking. It looks like it's smoking now, but it's not smoking. It's boiling away. Mm -hmm. So it worked really well if you want to take a look at the fire and see what kind of fire is making it boil. And it's still cool to the touch on the sides. That's a really good stove. Yeah, this is an excellent stove. I really think it can make a difference. Um, it could be made bigger. You could use a 50 gallon drum and cut that. There's, but this idea is something to work with. Yeah, hot water. I got a bucket of potatoes there. We ought to throw those in or cook rice and cook anything you needed. And not that much wood to do it. With this stove, the idea of is it as far as an emergency response stove, uh, in stove out of Cottage Grove, Oregon, has a m much better stove that would cook better, more efficiently, probably safer. Last longer. Last longer, but it's not going to get to the field immediately in most situations. So this is an idea for a stove that people with using local materials could be able to cook for big quantities of people as fast as possible.